Oh my God, people. See this shirt? You see my shirt right here? NXT, 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 NXT. People, this is my little review of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Of course, I am DJ Cass, and holy, you know what, of a show. This was a great, great show. Get this, I'm like texting, um, not really texting, but I'm on Facebook, and I post myself a picture, and I'm like, screw WWE's main roster, get rid of Lucha Underground. Who needs our ways? It's like NXT, 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 NXT all the way. I mean, this show was just fantastic. NXT Unstoppable, I always, NXT Unstoppable and NXT Rival were my two favorites, but this one, this one just takes the cake. And of course, I'm going to be going down match by match by match just to give you my quick thoughts on what I thought of NXT Brooklyn. So let's go ahead and get that started. We actually, uh, before we get to the matches, Triple H kicked off, and Triple H was just great. Of course, and we all know NXT is just um, his baby. Like, he's the one who really made NXT the way it is. And he's like, I like how the way he used the slogans on how, like, you helped us take over. You helped us arrive. And now you are helping us take over Brooklyn, New York. I thought that was a great way to get Triple H to kick off the show. And the first match that we had on the card was Jushin Thunder Liger, Japanese legend. Of course, we all, some of us know him from WCW and him in New Japan for wrestling versus Tyler Breeze. I thought this match was a solid opener. Definitely a good opener to kick off the show right. I thought this match and or the Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin match, which I will get to, was to be the kick was to be over, but this actually was perfect. Tyler Breeze, like people, Tyler Breeze is so underrated in NXT. He is so, so underrated. Like, it is just a shame. And now he has not been called up to the main roster yet. Possibly an IC champion. Some people call him a Dolph Ziggler wannabe, but as far as the matchup, like I said, it was fine to be the opener. And Juice and Thunder Liger picked up the win, which honestly I thought was weird because I think, I thought Tyler Breeze could have benefited a lot from defeating Juice and Thunder Liger, but I think I now I think I know why WWE did because this is Juice and Thunder Liger competing in the WWE for the very first time. Like this is the first time he will be competing in WWE, so that there was that aspect of it. People were really into Juice and Thunder Liger in this match. By the way, real quick, Tyler Breeze's entrance. Like, that New York City song, and just the, uh, I thought his entrance at Unstoppable back in May was great, but this one, again, takes the K. He, he just knows how to do it. He needs to be called at the main roster, hopefully soon. But yeah, like I said, really good match, good opener, and it kicked off for what was an awesome, awesome night. Next match that we had on the card, it was the NXT Tag Team titles on the line. It was... Blake and Murphy, the former NXT Tag Team Champs, versus the Vaud Villains. Now, of course, this is all because they had to get a, they got a rematch because Alexa Bliss got involved in the first time. And then, people, I don't know what you guys see in Blue Pants, but I don't... Blue Pants is over, and I really don't know why, but she is. As far as the match, like, Jesus Christ, like... This match was great. I would rank this like the top, one of the top matches. It wasn't even like every match wasn't bad. Every match was not bad at all for once so ever. But the NXT Tag Team titles, like I thought that this match definitely needed what it needed to be. Because the NXT Tag Team title matches on the recent specials haven't really meant so much. The last time I can remember NXT Championship that I was looking forward to seeing was actually last year when they did take over Fatal 4 with the Lucha Dragons and the Ascension. I'm not really big on Blake and Murphy. I actually think they suck because, one, they have no personality. They have no charisma. To me, they're just two dudes, and they're just a ripoff of the Edgeheads from uh, back in 2008. Or they're like the, they're like a copy of the Major Bros, but love the Vaude Village entrances. The coat and the, and the hats. Just the coat and the hats. Like, these guys are true gentlemen. It was so hilarious to watch. But the match quality was really, really good. Really good. Like, the crowd was definitely into it. Alexa Bliss played her role all right. Blue Pants is, to me, she was not. She wasn't that good in her role. Like, she was just awful. I honestly thought they could have did away with her. 
But yeah, I will give Blake and Murphy this. They do know how to work together as a team. And so do the VOD villains. I mean, like, I still think that this match should have involved Enzo and Big Cass somehow and maybe turned into a three-way, but I'm not going to hold them against that. Both teams really worked. And the VOD villains picked up the win. And I honestly thought after Aiden English hit that swanton bomb, I thought that was the finish. Like, I thought that they had the titles won. But it turns out, they just know how to work together as a team, so which is why I was just so impressed with them when they were working, when they worked together. And hopefully, we can get a good program out of the Vault Villains with the NXT Tap Team Tiles, because those tiles need a serious revamp. And this match was the night to do it. Good stuff. Next match that we had on the card, it was Tyler, Ty, not Ty, Ty Dillinger, the perfect 10, I guess what he's calling himself, versus Apollo Crews, formerly known as Yuha you hot nation and for a debut match it was actually all right like really all right well honestly when it comes to ty dillinger like of course he was in a tag team with jason jordan now he's actually become the cj parker of nxt because remember when cj parker was still around like he was basically jobbing to every nxt superstar he faced ty dillinger is now doing that but i'm gonna give the guy credit at least he's trying to get himself over for as much as he can but as far as apollo cruz goes Am I the only one that thought that he showed Bobby Lashley-like tendencies? Because that was the fear that I had got, because he was moving like Lashley would. For those of people, for those who watch TNA, not me. But yeah, he was moving like Bobby Lashley. Like, he just reminded me so much. This is actually my first appearance looking at him. I, I don't know you, ha Nation. I just know from what I've watched on footage and what I've seen, he's actually pretty good. And tonight, he definitely showed, and he got the win. Looking forward to see what Apollo Crews does from uh, this point. Definitely. Okay, and the next match, the one that I was so looking forward to, which was great. Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin, the lone wolf of NXT. I love the video package that kicked that started before the match. Like the video package definitely showcased what Baron Corman's all about because honestly, before I saw that, I didn't even know he had played for the Arizona Cardinals. And I love that WWE not WWE NXT people, NXT, not WWE. I like how NXT has definitely added these layers to um his character, because honestly, when it comes to Baron Corbin, they usually just like put him in squash matches, which is fine for his character, but it's like, I need to know a little bit more about him. Definitely, he's showing a lot more character, because honestly, he was getting, I would say, the Goldberg streamer. Like, people would love him, people would hate him, but now he's just flat out hated just because he's a cocky, you know what. Match quality was really, I thought was pretty decent. It was a classic big man versus big man match. You don't really see that a lot in WWE today. I mean, only time you get to see that if you're in WWE is really with Big Show and Mark Carey. And nobody, we don't want to see those guys in 2015 wrestle. But for Samoa Joe and Baron Corbin definitely put on a show. When Baron Corbin hit that, uh, the black hole slam or the side slammer you want to call it. And the fact that he actually did that to Joe was very impressive. This is Samoa Joe's first match at an NXT special, and he got the win, what I thought was a great sequence. I didn't even know Barry Corbin could actually do a sidekick. And Samoa Joe, of course, I watched NXT, I mean, watched TNA, so I know his history. I know what he's all about, know him for five years now. But yeah, like I said, really good match. Can't wait to see where Joe's going to go from here. Hopefully, he'll be battling for the NXT Championship at the next NXT special in October, which I know will be great, and I'll be wearing this shirt along with it. But that was fun. And now we get to the good stuff. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Stephanie McMahon came out to announce that the Divas Revolution was continuing. I'm not going to get into the whole Divas Revolution thing since that's mainly main roster stuff. But yeah, I liked how the way she definitely put in perspective on like what it means to be to be revolutionizing. Especially with the four horsewomen of NXT, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Bailey, and Sasha Banks, who I love, by the way. And the next match that we had, which I thought was match of the night, not discounting Valor and Owens for what they did, I will get into it, but I think this was match of the night. Bailey versus Sasha Banks for the NXT Women's Championship, not Divas, Women's Championship. What is 
is there to say about this match? I mean, this match was just all around great. It was just so beautiful to watch. <laughs> just great all around action. I will say, though, like, I did think they did take a bit of necessary risk, like, Honestly, when Sasha Banks kind of put, like, Bailey's hand, like, in the, in, like, the corner of the steps, and she kind of, like, kicked the steps, and Bailey was kind of clutching her hand, I was like, guys, be careful, like, I, I love the guys, I love that you guys are trying, but be careful for me, like, and also, I love the, uh, the, uh, outside dive that, uh, Sasha Banks did over the referee, because I ain't never seen that before, I have a woman in wrestling, that was great. And Sasha Banks, they took a lot of bumps in this match. I mean, match was great, great. This is a match of the year candidate, Peter. I, they took a lot of unnecessary bumps. <clears throat> but, like, the reversal into the, like, when uh, Sasha Banks, which I thought was more of the match, when Sasha Banks had the bank statement locked in, you could just see Sh Sasha Banks is just trying to do everything to keep Bailey away from that rope. And, like, she's, just, she's usually using her legs to push away. And Bailey does a reversal into a cross face. Into a cross face. And I literally, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought Sasha Banks was actually going to tap. And I'm glad Team Bad didn't get involved in this. Like, just let the NXT women just go. Like, let them go. I don't want no main roster UBS to screw this match up because we do not need that. <laughs> this needs to be straight up NXT. And Bailey actually hit the first uh, Bailey to belly, and Sasha Banks kicked out of that. I thought Bailey was actually gonna like hit a Bailey to belly off the top rope, but they actually didn't do that, which I was fine with. The Hurricane Rana into the finish, Jesus Christ, it was great, just just all around great stuff. And Bailey is your new NXT Women's Champion. I think this was long overdue. I thought Bailey should have won the NX, should have won the NXT Championship, NXT Women's Championship sooner than this. But hey, if I had to wait that long just to give this match that I got tonight, then I'm not complaining about it. I am so glad. And the ending of the match, I just wanted to cry. Like I was like, oh my god, they're breaking character. They're hugging this. These are the four NXT women that have changed this division. I seriously wanted to just cry. It was so amazing. Just match of the night. Definitely match of the night for me. Can't wait to see where Bailey's going to go with the NXT Women's Championship from here. I hope not Dana Brooke. I'm really hoping I'm not Dana Brooke or Emma because I've seen, I don't want to see that. Anyway, all right, now we have the main event of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. It was a ladder match for the NXT Championship. <clears throat> the former champion, Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor, formerly known as Prince David, the champion. This was a really good match. I, like I said, I enjoyed it. <clears throat> it's kind of weird that I'm putting Bayley and Sasha Banks as match of the night. I feel as if they had done so much in their match that it kind of left people like like the air was just came it just came out of like okay now we just got relax reset and Balor and Owens like this is not an arc on that one side they put on a great ladder match for what it was and this was the second ladder match in NXT history and Kevin Owens of course did his part as a heel Finn Balor did his part as a face like I did think there was a little bit too much brawling outside I'm like okay this is a ladder match I need to see ladders but yeah they did use the ladders eventually and it was um very effective like I honestly thought when Owens fell off that ladder on the, on his back on another ladder I thought he was done I don't know how the heck he was conscious at that point the coup de gras Finn Balor actually hit the coup de gras the first time off the top rope <laughs> And definitely, I like that they, it was a ladder match because it definitely shows the, the enduring. I thought Owens was actually going to win here, but Finn Balor gets the win and remains your NXT champion. Another spot that I liked in that match was where Kevin Owens, he was basically just throwing the, the stuff on the announcer, just throwing it at Finn Balor. That was great. And of course, I hope, I hope uh, Kevin Owens is still going to be well, at least 50 or 70% against Cesaro tomorrow night, which is going to be epic. 
Finn Balor, it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here with him as champion. I figured that he might face Hideo Hitami at the next special. We may get a heel Finn Balor, people. Don't be surprised if we, uh, if we do. The entrance that Finn Balor did, great, great, great. Just, if you've never seen it, you saw it tonight. Just great, great stuff. And that was NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. My overall thoughts, I mean, NXT, NXT, NXT. Like, what do you say about this show? This show was just all around great. It's just like, it's amazing for where, <clears throat> and I was watching NXT in 2013 when it wasn't really big as it is. And I loved it then, and I still love it now. So, you ain't going to get no complaints from me anytime there's an NXT special. It's going to be interesting to see how the main roster is going to be like, okay, now we got to step our game up because now we don't want to be outside of NXT. But I guarantee you, and this show will probably be better than SummerSlam tomorrow night. Just all around great. Love the storytelling. Every single match was great. There was not one bad match on this show. Not one. And that's how you do a two-hour show. That is how you do a two-hour show. You get good storytelling, good matches, and they got great time. Like I said, match of the night for me was Bailey versus Sasha Banks, hands down. As far as I'm concerned, I am DJ Cass, and that was my NXT review for you. See you around.